Jason Jenkins, African African American Mary Manager for Big Brothers Big Sisters of Central Ohio. Big Brothers Big Sisters of Central Ohio is a nonprofit prevention-based agency that serves the community by providing quality mentoring relationships to children and youth in need of a friend. Big Brothers Big Sisters impacts the lives of more than 4,800 children and youth in the Central Ohio area each year through its mentoring programs, including community-based school-based mentoring programs such as Project Mentor and Group Mentoring at campus. Say that one more time. Okay. Jason Jenkins. I'm going to stand behind the podium. I get a little nervous when I do that. Deanna asked me to come today uh, to uh, speak a little bit about how to impact students. Um, I, I can speak from personal experience. I really was hoping that uh, Mr. Russell went first. Uh, was part of the reason is because I grew up in the Windsor Terrace area and uh, he left a legacy that's, that's still out there. Um, I never met him personally, but I was terrified of him. I'm going to be 100%. I, um, I came down to uh, Columbus I'm originally from uh, Yonkers, New York, and uh, up there it was a little different. We didn't stay in school past 12 o'clock. Um, we had a little hole in the fence. We, we, we cut out through there, and we go we go get our lunch um, in, 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 in work. Um, from that, I learned how to do different skills in the street, and how to hustle, uh, how to steal cars, how to pickpockets, things of that nature. Um, and then, I, then we moved down to Columbus in the eighth grade. And uh, my eighth grade year, I was at Indianola Middle School. And uh, Indianola Middle School was a blend of Windsor Terrace and the short North area. Uh, I went there with a, a lot of your family members and younger brothers. Um, that's where I really was introduced to um, how separate Columbus was. So I, I needed to fit in. I needed to find a way to um, assimilate myself in, in the culture that, that, was, that, was, that was new to me. Because uh, in New York, you, you had really defined lines of your, your Latins, your, your, your African Americans, and where that was separated. Um, actually, when I moved to Windsor Terrace, I thought I moved to a suburb, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> I mean, it was flat. You know, where I'm from, it's all high rises and buildings. And the gangs that were in my high rises were uh, Crips, the Bloods, and uh, Latin Kings. And they all occupied these two towers. Um, well, the drug dealers decided to weld the back doors of our apartment shut, so there was only one way in, one way out. And unless you were cool, unless you could get in, assimilate uh, on some level, um, you weren't allowed in, or you weren't allowed out. Uh, it got to a point where the police wouldn't even come in, depending on the situation. They come in to pick up a body. That was about it. So when I moved to Windsor Terrace, I was like, wow, I'm in the suburbs. Then I'm watching the, the episode of the cops. You know, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? I'm watching that. And I see um, uh, a friend of mine um, at the time, his name is Big Mo. He, he runs across the screen and uh, there's a cop chasing him and he's in front of my complex. I'm like, wow, I'm back in the hood. You know, that was my, my wake up call. Um, so uh, at, when I was younger, I, I did everything I could to, to try to fit in. I didn't, I had both parents, uh, both, they, they loved me dearly, they still do. They, they did everything they could to keep me away from uh, some of the influences that were set up. Uh, at the time, it was Windsor Terrace Posse and the Short North Posse. And um, I had to figure out real quick who I was gonna roll with. Uh, but I found a way to kind of assimilate between the two. Um, I stayed somewhat neutral, but I was still out there, still still involved uh, in a lot of the different activities that were going on. Even with both parents, you know, I had to be in when the street lights came on. I, you know, they regularly spanked me because I just did not listen. Um, but even with all that positive influence, I still there was still a calling for me. I still had to be out there for some reason. I had to be around it. Um, I don't, if, if, if you're a, a, a practitioner in, in this field, if you're, if you're a, a parent of a teenager, I really don't have 
a, a solidified solution on how to keep the student away from that. Um, but constantly, like I think the thing that, that made me want to do what I did the most was the fact that I would disappoint my parents if I got caught doing any of these things. So I didn't get any signifiers, I didn't get any tattoos. Um, I did try to make it home, you know, all time as much as possible while I was out there. I told my parents I went to play basketball. I was out there, I was risking so much. Um, it got to a point where I, uh, I was in the 11th grade. I, I had mentors. I had a mentor by the name of Eddie Harrell when I, when I got here to Columbus. And uh, he followed me all the way through high school. I still talk to him uh, regularly. And uh, I think that was one of the real deciding factors, getting somebody around me, getting a system around me of individuals that care about me, even though I didn't see it at the time. It, it was definitely an eye-opener. You're always going to plant seeds in students, but you really never know what's going what's to turn into. You know, you never know when that light bulb is going to go off. For me, it was in the 11th grade. I was, uh, I was in the short north. Uh, I'm not going to tell you which street and everything. You know, all that. I was, um, I wasn't, I wasn't supposed to be here. They knew I was a Windsor Terrace dude. Uh, they knew who I were with different individuals in Windsor. I'm not going to disclose any name. Um, so uh, it was kind of a setup. I wasn't supposed to be there, but I was there. Females, had you, you know, all caught up and twisted. I'm out in Short North, and uh, they started shooting at the house I was in. It was me and about four other guys I was with. And uh, I look around when they're shooting at the house. I really didn't think they were shooting at the house. I thought they were shooting in the air just to scare us because we had previous confrontations with them. And um, a couple of bullets go through the window. That's when I realized yeah, they, they were trying to kill us. I look around the room. Everybody, the three guys I was there with are gone. I'm there by myself in the Swiss cheese house. Uh, I, I caught one bullet to the side. And I passed out. The girl that the, the reason why I made it to the to the ambulance, I passed out. Uh, the late the young lady that was there called um, the ambulance. They came and got me, and no phone calls from any of my dudes from Windsor Terrace. The three guys that were there at the house with me. Um, the only people that came to the hospital was my family and Eddie Herrera, and I'll never forget that. That right there was the turning point for me that kind of told me and woke me up, yo, this is, this, this is not where it's at. This is not where I need to be. Um, a lot of people don't get that wake up call. A lot of people get, a lot of my friends get shot and go right back and I don't understand. Because um, nobody's ever there when that happens. You know, you're by yourself. I'm the one walking around with the closet bag. You know, I'm the one missing the ribs. I'm the one missing the love. And it, it's hard to get that through to a student before it happens. Because we have to be out there, we have to see it, we want to breathe it. And when I talk to, to, to my young men, a couple of them I have my book um, I try to explain it to them, but it's hard. The, one of the young men I mentor at Brookhaven just got stabbed um, at a gas station, he was in an altercation. And I'm talking to him in the hospital, I say, yo, where's the guy that drove here, you know? Where's the guy that, that you know, all your boys at? Where's, where's Brookhaven at? All the people that said they love you. It's your family and, and, and the people that really care about you here. So I hope it's a wake up call for him. I hate the fact that he had to go through it, but sometimes you gotta go through some, some hard times to realize, you know, this is what you need to do. Um, when I heard Mr. Russell was uh, going out speaking against uh, youth violence, it, 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 another light bulb went off. Um, a lot of the reason why we have Mr. Terry's a short one yeah. because of Mr. Russell. A lot of, and, and at that time I idolized this gentleman because he was hard. He laughs about it, but he was the man in the short north. Okay? He was the reason why I gang back. And to, to see him come back up here and actually speak to you all about how it, it's not cool to do that. That speaks volumes. Because there are people out there that, that take that for granted. I'll turn around and do it again. Um, I visited with the Otterbein. I graduated from Otterbein because of Eddie. You know, he went to Otterbein. I went to Otterbein. I had to follow his footsteps. I uh, 
got back into working with students, uh, with big brothers, big sisters. I was also in a, did work with truancy and uh, uh, suspension program with Columbus Public Schools. So because of my experiences with the youth and what I've been through, it's just motivated me to try to get out there and um, do what I can to, to, to help out. And like I said, uh, I would be as persistent as you can with the young people that you work with because it's there's really no 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 piece of the puzzle that you can put in there and say, hey, this is what's going to happen. But as long as you're persistent, you don't give up on it. You'll be all right. Thank you.